The Life and Sad Ending of John Gavin. John Gavin, born John Anthony Golner, was born on April 8, 1931, in Los Angeles, California. Gavin's mother was Delia Diana Pablos, of Mexican descent. His father was Harold Ray Golner, who had Irish origins. After attending Roman Catholic School St. John's Military Academy in Valanova Preparatory, he earned a Bachelor of Arts in Economics degree in Latin American Affairs from Stanford University, where he did his senior honors work in Latin American economic history and was a member of the Chi Psi Fraternity and Navy ROTC. During the Korean War, Gavin was commissioned in the U.S. Navy, serving abroad the USS Princeton off Korea, where he served as an air intelligence officer from 1951 until the end of the war in 53. Due to Gavin's fluency in both Spanish and Portuguese, he was assigned as Flag Lieutenant to Admiral Milton E. Miles until he completed his four-year tour of duty in 1955. He received an award for his work in Honduras floods in 1954. Following his naval service, Gavin offered himself as a technical advisor to a family friend and film producer, Brian Foy, who was making a movie about the Princeton. Instead, Foy arranged a screen test with Universal International. Gavin turned down the offer, but his father urged him to try it. The test was successful, and Gavin signed with the studio. Universal groomed Gavin as a leading man in the mold of Rock Hudson. He trained in Jess Kimmel's talent workshop under the name John Gilmore. His classmates included Grant Williams, Gia Scala, and John Saxon. His first film was Raw Edge in 1956, where he played the brother of Roy Calhoun and was billed as John Gilmore. His name was changed to John Gavin for the films behind The High Wall in 1956, Four Girls in Town in 1957, and Quantes in 57 as well. Gavin's break was a lead in A Time to Love and A Time to Die in 1958, directed by Douglas Sirk from the novel by Eric Maria Romerick. Sir cast Gavin because of Gavin's inexperience, fresh looks, and earnest manner. The film was not a success when it was released, although Gavin received praise for his performance. Before A Time to Love and A Time to Die had been released, Gavin was cast by Douglas Sirk, supporting Lana Turner in The Imitation of Life in 1959. Unlike A Time to Love and A Time to Die, this was a box office success and Gavin was voted the most promising male newcomer for his performance in the film by Motion Picture Exhibitor. Gavin appeared as Julius Caesar in Universal's epic Spartacus in 1960, directed by Stanley Kubrick. He was cast as Sam Loomis in the thriller Psycho in 1960 as well, from Alfred Hitchcock. Both films were successful critically and commercially. Following the success of Imitation of Life, Gavin was often cast as the handsome opposite of the leading ladies, but as characters who were permitted little action. He co-starred against Doris Day in a thriller, Midnight Lace, Sophia Loren in the comedic A Breath of Scandal, both in 1960, Susan Hayward in the melodrama Backstreet and Sander D in Romanoff and Juliet and Tammy Tell Me the Truth, all in 1961. Gavin left Universal in 1962. He signed to make several movies in Europe, including The Assassins, The Challenge, and Night Call. However, he pulled out of The Assassins, which became Assassins of Rome, in 1965. Night Call and The Challenge were never made. In early 1964, he starred in the TV series Destry, the series was not a rating success and was canceled. In September of 64, he signed a new contract with Universal, which gave him the option to take work outside of the studio. He appeared in the television series Convoy, which was canceled after a short run. He appeared in Mexican films such as Pedro Paramo in 1967, based on the novel by Juan Ruflo. 
Gavin's next role was of Mary Tyler Moore's stuffy boyfriend in Universal's 1920-era musical Thoroughly Modern Millie in 1967. Gavin saw the role as an opportunity to parody his performance in Ross Hunter Films. In June of 1966, Gavin signed a five-year non-exclusive contract with Universal. He was cast in the lead in OSS 117, Double Agent, in 1968, then titled No Roses for Robert, replacing Frederick Stafford, who was filming Alfred Hitchcock's Topaz. He acted in supporting roles in The Mad Woman of Chelyot in 1969 and Pussycat, Pussycat, I Love You in 1970, in which he parodied his own image. Gavin was signed for the role of James Bond in the film Diamonds Are Forever in 1971 after George Lazenby left the role. However, David Picker, head of United Artists, wanted the box office insurance of Sean Connery. Gavin's contract was honored despite losing the role of Connery. According to Roger Moore's James Bond diary, Gavin was slated to play Bond in Live and Let Die in 1973, but Harry Saltzman insisted on a British actor for the role, and Moore was given it. Gavin was on board for the Screen Actors Guild, SAG, in 1965. He was served a term as third vice president and two terms as president from 71 to 73. During his presidency, Gavin testified before the Federal Trade Commission on the phone talent rackets and met with President Nixon to present the problem of excessive television reruns. Gavin made a foray into live theater in the 70s, showcasing his baritone voice. He toured the summer stock circuit in El Gallo, a production of the Fantastics and the South Shore Music Circus 20th Anniversary Summer Season, June 29th to July 4th, 1970, in Massachusetts. In 1973, Gavin replaced Ken Howard in the Broadway musical Seesaw, opposite Michael Lee. Gavin said he first turned down the musical because of his unhappiness with the quality of the book, but reconsidered when Michael Bennett asked him to join the cast. He played the role for several months and toured the United States in the role as Lucy Arnaz. Both the Broadway and touring production were directed by Michael Bennett. In the late 1970s, Gavin played Gary Grant in the television movie Sophia Loren, Her Own Story, in 1980. A Republican, Gavin was appointed the U.S. Ambassador to Mexico in June of 1981 by President Ronald Reagan and served until June of 1986. In personal life, Gavin married actress Cicely Evans in 1957. They had two children and lived in Beverly Hills. The marriage ended in divorce in 1965. While making No Roses for Robert in Italy of 67, Gavin dated co-star Luciana Paluzzi. In 1974, Gavin married stage and television actress Constant Towers. The two had originally met at a party in 1957, introduced by Gavin's godfather, Jimmy McHugh. They met again years later when both were divorced. Towers also had two children from her previous marriage to Eugene McGrath. Gavin and Towers remained married until his death. Sadly, on the 9th of February in 2018, at the age of 86, Gavin died of complications from pneumonia in his home in Beverly Hills, California. He had also suffered from leukemia for an undisclosed amount of time. He was cremated and ashes were given to his family.